Hey! Right What's going on? Summer? Hey? Right here, Yeah. You got him excited. Fuck. Sorry, Rob. God, Randy, you're just gonna spill. At least he didn't blow snot all over you. I almost wasn't gonna make a video tonight, but now that Marcel's here, gotta do it. Special guest, the big man. I just popped my hood, and I can't find my moat. Mo. I walked in the bank, bank, like bitch, never mind my oath. What's up, guys? Tonight I don't do fuck all on this. I'm lazy. I'm tired. I'll work on it on the weekend. Huh? I thought it'd just be flat. I didn't think there'd be a big gap. Oh, that's from the valve getting it, I guess. I think what that is it a relief? No, no, it's good. I think what happened there was the tensioner was broken, right? And I think that was the chain was sloppy and probably the valve were tapping the. Uh, so does that mean you're gonna, you're gonna get less compression now or what? Yeah, for this little spot? for this little bit here. Yeah, smooth that out. I did. Yeah. Keep the French closed and keep the pump closer. Project, I said. He's like, oh. So what's that for? It looks too fancy. <laughs> Are you resizing rods over there? Or? It's an MLS gasket. I thought those needed to be fairly flat. We, uh, we've proved that for a couple of times. We'll have to use flat as equally. Here, you mean? Oh, you combine that with Chinese those those three you're in shit. for a oh, fucking rodeo now. So, I don't know what you... Then he threw them all in the recycling bin. Those fucking packing peanuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're all right. thinking about one at a time. Just here. Infuriated. Who the fuck puts packing peanuts in the recycling bin? I don't know, man. I really don't know. I, I don't totally would. I don't know who would do that. You can't recycle fucking styrofoam. I would. You can't if it's food styrofoam. You guys all fucking dumb. Why are you recycling, please? No, but you can't well, you recycle can. food styrofoam. Like, if you get, like, you know, wings in a box and a no, styrofoam. No, you can't. Yeah, you can. That you, that uh, you can. cannot. Styrofoam. Cut. You can't yeah, you recycle can. styrofoam. Yeah, you can. Oh, my God. The, the food grade stuff. Oh, okay. This is Rob's aluminum 5.3. It has this... This pattern, these markings, cutting marks on the uh, deck surface here. Apparently it's a pretty common thing with these blocks. Probably just gonna leave it like that. How about that? And it'll be good. No, How about no, that? No. How about that? Sure, it'll be fine. I would deck it if it was mine, but... Clayton would have it in about three different machine shops. All right, so today I might actually get some work done. I already drilled the hole in the oil pan here for the uh, turbo drain. Just gotta TIG weld that thing on there, and that'll be good. Cleaned all the bolts for the manifolds, and I'm putting them on with the gaskets, torquing them down. Once the oil pan is done being welded, I'll put that back on the motor and torque it for the final time, as well as this timing cover I have to untorque and torque again. Because as a commenter posted out, and as Rob told me shortly before that commenter posted, you're supposed to have the crank pulley on here when you tighten this to kind of locate it and make sure it's centered. Rob's doing some twerking of his own over here. Serious business. If you saw in the previous videos, we used this tool with my rod bolts. Princess Auto, about 20 bucks. And of course, for the torque specs, we got old Bendy on standby. I got the exhaust... <clears throat> so, I got the exhaust manifolds bolted on and the bolts all cleaned up and decent looking. Uh, someone commented on another video about uh, measuring the, uh, the lifter preload. We were just talking about it and we decided it's good. So it's gonna be good. I know a lot of people use these stock push rods with the LS9 cam and it's basically almost a stock cam, well it is a stock cam from an LS9 Corvette, but it's not that big of a cam, so I don't see there being any issue with my limited knowledge of motors and camshafts. So it's Saturday now, Rob's continuing putting his motor together just flying together in usual Rob fashion. He's got the cam in there from BTR, timing chain on, he's putting the oil pump on now. I decided to paint my water pump just because I had some of that cast iron paint left so I figured why not make it match the rest of the motor. But I almost feel like painting it, I've guaranteed that it's gonna leak when I put it on now. But we'll find out later. 
Next thing for me to do is to TIG weld this bung onto the oil pan for the turbo oil drain. To turn it up quite a bit, it all depends. But we'll try it at like 140 and see what happens. You get your foot on the pedal, and then you want to hold it. I, I can't get that hot, but you want to put the gloves on because it gets hot. But I'm not going to put any rod in there, I'll just show you how to kind of hold it. They say to hold it straight up like this, and then when you start welding, you turn it a bit. So you get close without touching, obviously. And then you press on the pedal. It takes a while at the beginning to get it like melting, especially with aluminum. And that's okay. And then usually, which I didn't do, but usually when you stop your well, just you hold it here for a bit because the gas cools it, you know? Yeah. Because it's still flowing and it cools it. Fuck, that's pretty nice, actually. <laughs> it's like dime stacks, yo. And basically, that's all there is to it. And like I said, if you touch the tungsten, it's fucked. Like, you have to regrind it. And then the pedal, the more you press it, the hotter it gets. Oh, yeah. And I'll do that. You get it? Yep. You know, you'll see it start melting. When it starts melting, that's when you start moving. And like I said, don't touch it to the thing. You're gonna get it way too hot. Was it doing anything? I might not have been on the pedal enough. See, like there, it's melting. It started, yeah. But here, which way were you going? From there to here? No, the other way. This way? Yeah. Yeah, see, you weren't holding it. Like, you, it wasn't hot, definitely wasn't hot enough. Like I said, just kind of hold it in one spot until you see it actually melting. Little more yet. But that was closer. It was definitely turning into, starting to turn into like a right. shiny pool, but. You're yeah, trying to pull, but right now you're trying to like pull it. You're going the wrong way. Because basically that's what you want to do is like push the puddle along, right? Right now you're heating it and then you're dragging away from the puddle, right? Yeah. Yeah. That so makes you, sense. You want to go towards, like you want to push the puddle. Once you get a puddle going, you, you're, the welder's pushing it. There you go. See, that's more like it. Third time's the charm. Yeah. For setting the table on fire as well. <laughs> a little wide. Yeah, little but that's thick. okay. It's a nickels, not dimes. With all the hours I've put into this thing cleaning it already, I really hope I don't fuck this up. The pan and the bung are both pretty thick though, so I'm not gonna burn through. Should go fine. I cleaned up the area really good with acetone, and now I've got a bolt holding the bung in place, and I'm gonna start welding. <laughs> I don't think it's fucked, luckily. The threads seem okay, they're just a little messy there. But at least it's on there, right? All right, so I salvaged it a bit, getting the hang of it a little bit more using the uh, filler rod. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep going and uh, show you more when I'm done. So this is the proper way to set up an oil pump for an LS, apparently. That's what they say. With all these feeler gauges. So Rob went to the store and bought three feeler gauges just so we could do this properly. Because we do everything by the book over here at RFG. <laughs> Definitely. You know it. Rob got his new oil pump and it came with multiple uh, O-rings in it. So I'm going to use one for my pickup tube since the other one felt a little shitty. I read a comment from someone that said about doing this, as well as Rob told me. But basically, before you torque the timing cover on, you're supposed to use a balancer, crank pulley, whatever you want to call it, and push it in there and align it. So basically, you push it on there with the timing cover still a little bit loose, and that way you can torque it down exactly where it needs to be for that to fit correctly and not screw up the rubber gasket. This is just a factory truck crank pulley that Rob uh, cut up 
and uh, opened up the uh, inside diameter a little bit so it can slide on there easy. So if you're doing a couple of these motors, it might be worthwhile making one for yourself too. I want to talk about numbers, huh? Is it just my color pet? It's Sunday now. Uh, as you can see, I've got some of the front accessories on, well, all of them basically. The sides alternator, which I'll have to fit in the car when we're test fitting the motor. And within the course of like two days, Rob has caught up basically to where I am with my engine build. I still have to do the fitting and fabrication in my car though, which he already has done. So he's way ahead of me and the Nova should be starting up anytime now, right? Anytime. <laughs> Rob got a Summit balancer, really nice looking, shiny. He put his uh, turbo oil drain return fittings on his uh, timing cover. Next step is torquing down the Chinese studs. That's the next step, they're in there, just gotta torque them up. We actually, well, Rob found that I used the wrong instructions to do mine. I torqued mine to like 90, on the bendy I went to like 95 on the final pass. And apparently you're only supposed to go to 80, right? Depends on which one you read, 70, 80. But I read a lot of people go to 80 or 90 with them anyway, so I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. So mine I pushed to the limit and they didn't snap, so. So far, so good. That's it. That's all there is to it. It's simple. Simple fucking math.